Oh, I'm a bit zoomed in now. Are we going to do the dance of the... I'm not, I'm not going to do the dance of the zooming in. We're going to leave it zoomed in and hope for the best, I think. Let's get it straight at least. Let me just see where we're at. Oh, try and make it... Oh, no. So this is the problem with zooming it out. But there we go. That's where we want it. We want it there. Right. Hello, everybody. How are we all? Oh, I think I need to switch off my... Let me just put my do not disturb on. Otherwise, all it's going to do is buzz the whole way through. So let me just switch that on. There we go. Hopefully no one's going to disturb us now. Right. <coughs> okay, let's see who's on. Let's see who is on. Okay, got four people on at the moment. So come and say hello in the chat. Hi, sweet pea. 7.30 a.m. My goodness, you're so committed, honestly. <laughs> you are. In Massachusetts. How, what's the weather like in Massachusetts? Is it nice? Uh, we've got sunshine at the moment. It's chilly. It's not that cold, but it's chilly. But um, we have got sunshine at least. So that's good. <coughs> Hi, Rita Retro. Hello. Hello, Linda in Michigan. Hi, Karen in Arkansas. Hi, Liz in Minnesota. Thank you. These are from Antonio Makes. Um, from one of his old kits. Happy Haberdashery. Um, hi Debbie in Brisbane, six thirty in Arkansas. Oh, my goodness, you guys, you're too committed. Hi Kobe again, good to see you. <coughs> yeah, it's lovely and sunny here, thankfully. Hurrah! It started off really murky and foggy. It was horrible. Hi Cindy. Um, oh, it's warm for winter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean here it's about. I think this morning it was about three or four degrees. Um, and now I think it's probably about eight maybe mm, i wouldn't say 10 about eight degrees i think um who else we got hi debbie 10 30 p.m wow okay it's not too bad uh liz raining and cold in minnesota Ugh, it's one of the worst weathers i think really isn't it hi rosemary in perth um <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> i don't like wet and cold i don't mind cold and just dry particularly i don't really like wet full stop really <laughs> i mean we need it we do need it for the for the garden but um um, hi, Vicky. Stormy Queensland. Oh, wow. Is it stormy? Okay. Because summer isn't over there, so I suppose you're getting your thunderstorms and that. Hi, Deborah. Baltimore, Maryland, 7.30 a.m. Wow. Wow, you guys. I think I'd be up an hour. I'd already been up for an hour at half seven this morning. <clears throat> but um, I wouldn't be able to come on alive, that's for sure. Hi, Gina in Cincinnati, 7.30 as well for you. Uh, Trish in Dublin, hello. Diane from Leicester, only not, not that far down the road from me, Diane. I'm in Birmingham, so not very far. Hi, Karen. Warm in Arkansas. Oh, really? Okay. 55. I keep meaning to get this Celsius Fahrenheit converter thing going on. I keep forgetting. Um, yes, in, indeed, sweet pea. Happy Valentine's Day to all. Um, hi, Fru in Denmark. I've always wanted to go to Denmark. One day I'm going to make it there. Denmark, Finland are the two Scandinavian countries I haven't been to. I've done Sweden, done Norway uh what are the other ones is that it i don't know my brain's gone blank but anyway yeah i want to come to denmark and actually there's a, a crafty lady who um used to be on the trim craft site and she's from denmark so i send her a birthday card every year hi linda with the same surname as me um hi <laughs> rosemary um yes yeah, so i'm just gonna wait a couple more minutes for people to join in and then we will make a start now, the card we're doing today, um, I'm going to show you in a moment, <clears throat> but it came from another card, which I haven't done a tutorial for yet. But by the time the tutorial for it goes up, I will have done, you know, I will have, they'll be both will be up basically one after the other. So I'm going to show you, this isn't, the card I'm going to show you now is not the card we're making today. Okay. I'm going to, then going to show you the card we are going to make. So I don't know if you've seen, there's a, um, uh, I saw it on Pinterest. I think she's called Trenuth Crafty Creations or Trenuth Creations, something like that. And she made a, I think she called it a double diamond card. So basically this, but without the third one in the middle. So it had just two, two diamonds. It hasn't got the one in the middle. Okay. Now I'm, I've done a tutorial for this. It will be going up at some point soon. OK, not this weekend, possibly next weekend or the weekend after. I'm not sure. But um, 
yeah, it will be going up soon. So it's making it swim. Um, it'll be going up soon. But off the back of that, I then thought, mm, I know what everyone's going to be asking me for, because this folds flat to a six by six. The question is going to be, can you make it in a five by seven? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to work out the five by seven before anybody else gets there. So that's why we're doing that today. So the five by seven version looks like this. So this is the five by seven version. So this is what we're going to be making today. And so it folds down, and this one side, it folds down flat and it will fit in an envelope for a five by seven card. The actual footprint is six and three quarters high by five inches wide, but it will fit in. Let me quickly catch up on messages. Um, hi, Deborah. Um, oh, Valentine's cookies. Cool. I wish you were new to me. I'll happily have some Valentine's cookies. Hi, Jenny in Holland. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Um, Linda, oh, near Stockport. Okay, yeah, and Stockport's nice. Thank you, Karen. Hi, Nola. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's this one. So then these papers are from Antonio Makes. Don't forget to use my code Louise10 to get 10% off. Um, and this is the Bright Bouquet pack. And then these flowers were actually from his Happy Haberdashery um, kit that he brought out like right at the very beginning. So um, I think they're still available. They might even be on sale. I'm not sure. And on the back, obviously, you've got space to write. Um, and you've got one pattern panel and then one space to write panel. So, yeah, so that's the card we're doing today. Now, if you wanted to, you could make it five and put another diamond here, another diamond here, which I did think about doing. And I might do that at some point. But, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. But I wanted to do it today because I have a feeling there are going to be certain crafters who are going to be thinking the same as me. Right, I've done a six by six. How do I do a five by seven? So I wanted to get in there first. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has done the five by seven, but I wanted to get in there first. Just saying. So this is it. Um, I have done the video for it. I've shot this is why I got this card. So I did that this morning. That will video will be going up soon. Probably next week, maybe, or the week after. Not quite sure. I need to look at the schedule and see what I've got scheduled in. But yeah, so this is um, what we're making. <clears throat> so... Let's have a look. Who else we got? Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, the flowers on the diamonds. Yeah, they're, as I said, they're the Happy Dashery kit. And I actually mounted them onto vellum and then curled them just to make them stand up a little bit. So, yeah. Thank you, Gina. That's really, really kind of you. Um, exactly, Vicky. Yeah, Sam did the 6x6 six six last week. Exactly. So, because she'd seen... it was <laughs> She beat me to it, you see, because I saw um, Trenu's creations of this one. And I was like, oh, I need to do that. And then the next thing I saw Mixed Up Crafts, Sam had done it. And I was like, oh, she's beating me to it. So I was like, right, I'm going to work out the five by seven and I'm going to get in there first. So that's why I'm doing that today, because I've scheduled a whole load of videos that need to be scheduled in for when they're scheduled in. So I can't fit this one in. So I thought, right, I'm going to do it on the live stream. <laughs> I'm going to get in there. <laughs> I'm going to get in there quickly. Um, hi, Beth. Southern Ontario, Canada. Oh, sunny. Good. That's nice. Right, cool. I'm glad it's sunny. It's sunny here as well. So for this one, it stands up nicely. I'm going to stick it over there for now. Let me move my flowers. So these were also from his Happy Haberdashery range. I've cut out the middles and just stuck them onto vellum because I wanted a little bit of see-through, but I didn't want it completely see-through. So we're going to use those in a moment. Um, thank you, Vicky. Yeah, I do like Antonio Max's papers, as you know, and I get commission from it, but I don't use them just because I get commission. Um, I use them because I actually really like them. Otherwise, I wouldn't keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on using them because I really do like them. I just think they're beautiful. Like, who doesn't love a butterfly? I mean, you know. Right, okay. So, for this, we need... Thank you, Sweet Pea. Um, so, for this, we are going to need a base card that is six and three quarter inches by nine and a half. Now, as Sam did for hers, I've done a little diagram because in a minute it's going to get a little bit confusing. So I've done a little diagram um, and then hopefully you'll be able to understand where all the diagonal folds are because it does get a little bit tricky. So strap the old uh, brain cells in because my little brain cell was starting to melt a little bit when I was working this out. Um, hi, Bear in Cork City in Ireland and hi, Stacey from the Bahamas. Very nice. Very nice. I think I'd rather be there right now, Stacey, I have to say. Right, okay, so on this, on this one here, 
you're not a butterfly fan linda okay well not everyone is not everyone is i love my butterflies but yep yeah, it's fine not everyone you know everyone likes different things it's not a problem okay so on your base card along the long edge oh and let me quickly start by saying if you're watching this back i have to do this for the people who are going to watch this back if you're watching this back and you don't want to hear all the chat you just want to see the, the, the tutorial this is a live stream it will be full of chat that's what live streams are about there will be a tutorial for this and it will be going up soon okay so if you don't want to listen to all the chat if you're watching this back later on you don't want to see, hear all the chat then just hold on for the tutorial I have to say that, my little caveat, because I get quite a lot of comments saying, oh, it's too chatty. Yes, it's a live stream. That's why it's chatty. OK, so just have to say that quickly. Right. OK, where was I? <laughs> so along the nine and a half inch edge, we're going to score at two and a half, top to bottom. Oh, you're not either, Rosemary. There you go. Linda, you've got a friend. Um, oh, OK, they remind you of moths. OK, yeah, I get that. I understand. I understand that. OK, so two and a half. Uh, three and five eighths you're going to score then at four and three quarters you're just going to make a little mark you're not actually going to score it and we're going to do one at the bottom in a minute but we'll come to that then we're going to score at five and seven eighths top to bottom and at seven inches top to bottom okay and then i'm just going to quickly skirt it over like that and i'm just going to put at four and three quarters i'm just going to make another little mark at the bottom here okay so you end up with that um anna marie just like oh mum won't be on she, oh no you both come down with tonsillitis oh i hope you're both feeling better soon well oh, that's not much fun tonsillitis is not fun um yeah i hope you guys are feeling better soon send her my love when she wakes up um <clears throat> they could cindy they could what they they could but people don't but it's just the fact that people come on and moan about it and i'm just like you know what live streams are not for me just being quiet because that would be really boring live streams are for everyone to get involved and so that means people chat and that's how it is actually before we do that right okay let me think engage the brain right so before i do the lines going the other way i'm going to go ahead and fold along these lines now the reason being i didn't do that for this card and then it made it a bit tricky to fold along the lines so let's do that now so with that like that let's just fold along these lines here and they're all going to be valley folds okay so let's just fold them all as valleys excuse me keep turning it round it's because i'm right-handed oh there we go like that now you need to be really accurate when you do your all your folds for this okay so there we go so we've got all valley folds like that i'm just going to turn it over this way around don't know why but i am um and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut we're going to do cut lines so we are going to cut at uh well two and a quarter and four and a half but i'm going to start with four and a half just because of my trimmer works that way and we're going to cut from the first score line all the way to the last score line okay now if you want to use a you know a craft knife or whatever instead you can so there's the first one and then we're going to put it in at two and a quarter and we're going to do the same again so ooh, just going to go from that first line up to the last line like that now my trimmer isn't the best and has made a bit of a mess of that so i'm going to need to just clean that up probably should have used a um probably should have used a standing knife but anyway whatever i didn't do that so there we go um we've we got you like the chat cindy yeah some people just like to moan they do thank you vicky well exactly that this is the thing this is why i just think if you want like for me i'm not a big fan of live streams like watching other people's live streams i'm not a big fan of it so i don't watch them do you know what I mean if i do watch them i'm prepared for the fact that i'm going to be hearing chat because that's what a live stream is <laughs> just like do you know what I mean? like, right this bit here i'm doing now is just because of the rough bits I just need to get rid of my rough in fact let me go in with a pair of scissors actually i've got rough bits because of my trimmer because certain cards it doesn't like i'm not sure i'm going to do this actually uh, i think i might just have to just bear with it oh well we've got distressed edge never mind we've got a distressed edge let me just fold these the other way so I, it's on the back not on the front 
Bear with a second. All right, let's just fold these back again. Okay, you won't need to do this. It's just because my rough bits are on the back and so I would rather not see them on the front of my card. To sort them out could be a bit of a pain. I don't want to trim anything else off because I don't want to make those slits any bigger than they are. Right, so there we go. So now what we want to do is I'm going to bring in my super complicated looking um, diagram, which makes you go, Ugh! look, I know it looks horrific, but it's not that bad. I, I promise you. So we've already done these four lines and we've already cut these two lines. OK, so we're, we're most of the way there. So now we're going to score from the top of our two and a half line down to the end of our second cut line, our four and a half line. OK, so we're going to cut, we're going to score, not cut, from here up to that corner there. Now you want to make sure you really do get it spot on, because if you don't, it won't match up. When you go the other way, it's not going to match up. OK, I don't know if you can see that. I can't see it on my screen, but hopefully you can. There's a line basically going from here to here. I'm now going to do a line from here to here. OK, I'm just going to turn my mat round a bit. So from the bottom of that line there up to the top of there. Now, when you do this score, if you just check and make sure that it when, where it crosses over this line going the other way, it does actually cross over. It doesn't go um, off on one. So you basically want it. You want that line, that line and that line to all cross at that point. OK, so that's where you want it to be. So when you've done that, turn your card round and do exactly what you've just done all over again on this top section here. So ignore these lines that you've just done. So you're going to go from the top here again, again to the bottom here. And I found that turning it round helps the brain cell to get what is going on. If you try and do things upside down, it really doesn't work. And again, when you're doing this one now, this line here needs to intersect the other line going that way and that line going that way. OK. So just bear that in mind. And then we're going to go again from here. So the bottom of this four and a half inch cut line up to the top of that seven inch score line all the way across. And as we go, we should be intersecting quite a lot of lines. We should be intersecting this here. We should be intersecting here nicely on that line. And this one, again, all those points should meet in the same place. So just check that they do. Right. So now all we need to do is add in a few more lines. So from that halfway mark, the five and three quarter mark, you're going to score from there to the bottom of your top cut line. OK, so you're going to score from there to there and then from there to the other side. So this is why I'm just breaking it down, because looking at that diagram is like, what? And again, when you're lining your ruler up, just make sure that it intersects that line and that line. They all meet at the same point. It's not like you've got one line going over the other, you know what I mean, above the other. OK, and the same over here. So from here to here, and they should all meet at this section here, which they do. OK, so that's your top one. And then if you turn it round again, I don't know if you can see these lines. I'm hoping you can, but that's why I did the diagram. I'll put the diagram back up again. We're going to repeat what we just did there again here. So from the four and three quarter down to the end of the cut line, from the four and three quarter down to the end of the other side of the cut line. And again, make sure that they intercept the other two lines as you go past them. OK, so that's that one there. And this one here. Now, it is quite tricky. You do need to have had a decent night's sleep and be on your craft game when you try and make this. OK, cool. You can see them, Cindy. Excellent. OK, so there you go. So you end up with what looks like a patchwork quilt. So that should be that. That should be what you've done. And that's all your score lines done. So it's really not too bad. This looks horrendous. It's like, where do I even start? But when you break it down, which is what I've done here, Hopefully you can see it's not too bad. So just remembering you're like a bigger square and cut, you know, you're, you're scoring there and there. Turn it around, do the same again with that top square. And then you're just literally doing, if you treat this rectangle as one piece, you're going from the middle to the end, from the middle to the end, 
turn it round, do the same again, middle to the end, middle to the end, and you're done. Okay, right, so now we have the nice job, hmm, she says sarcastically, of trying to fold along these lines. So all of your vertical lines should be valley folds, and all your diagonal lines should be mountain folds. So I'm going to just very carefully now go in and just start kind of coaxing them into place, basically. I'll just do one diagonal line at a time. Now this card tends to crack, I can see. I'm not getting the sharpest of um, crease lines, but anyway, whatever. It's fine. Um, I would not go too thick with this if I were you. I would really make sure that you, you know, this card that I'm using now is actually a cheap card. It was from Poundland and it's about a, what is it? Probably a 200. Yeah, maybe a 200. Um, so it's not too bad. Uh, the one that I used for this card that I showed you at the beginning, that was, that was only a 180 actually. And it, it did fold quite nicely. I did end up, it's got a white core, so I end up seeing the core. It did crack. But um, yeah, you don't want to go too thick for this card. I really wouldn't go too thick. Okay, so let's go ahead and crease. And then in a minute, we're going to really show it where to go. Now, hopefully, all your lines are pretty much... There we go. Right. So you should end up with that, hopefully. So then what you want... It's like a math problem, this, doesn't it? So then what you want to do is you're going to pop these in so pop all of these little triangles in and just very gently holding this side bring it over and kind of flatten it down and when it's flat you want to get your your score tool thing your bone folder and give it a really good burnish flat like that okay there we go and then you want to do the same on the other side so just bend these in and kind of move your shimmy your card in and get it so it's actually folded flat and then just really give it a really good burnish now you can see here I don't know if you can see this this is slightly off on this middle middle diamond is slightly off i can see the one below but i won't worry about it too much because once it's up it kind of you know it's fine but it's it's pretty much spot on to be honest with you Okay, and then we just turn this over, and I'm going to give it a a once up and down here, like this. There we go. Okay, so there we have it. It's a bit rough around the edges, but anyway, whatever, it's fine. Um, so that is your fold. So that's your pretty much the base of your card done. So now you want to go ahead and decorate it. I know it is amazing what you can do with a flat piece card, isn't it? <laughs> I love card, I love paper. It just it's just amazing. Right, you're gonna need four matte pieces, um, and these are two and a quarter by six and a half, and they're obviously gonna go there and there, and the same on the back. And then onto that you need three pattern pieces that are two inches by six and a quarter. Actually, let me go with that one and that one, and that can go around the back. Oh no, actually, I think I quite like that one on the uh, no, let's go this one. Apologies to all you butterfly people who don't like butterflies. Um, I need to stamp this actually as well. Uh, right, so I'm going to go ahead now and stick these down into place and I need to stamp that as well. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it's um, it's um, it was a bit of a mind bender. I was trying to work out how to divide seven into three and it just wasn't happening. So that's why I went for six and three quarters. So I thought at least that does divide into three. So once I did that, I then managed to figure out how to... Uh, how to get it all to work so yeah what i would probably do actually with this is you might do well once you've got that like once you've done one and you've got the hang of it if you make yourself up maybe a few of if you feel like you can if it wasn't too traumatic for you make yourself up a few of them and just leave them like in a folder like blanks ready to go because the actual decoration of this doesn't take very long it's only really that all that folding and scoring so uh <laughs> thank you karen <laughs> Yes, it was a bit of a mind bender. It was a bit of a mind bender, but I was desperate to to do it because I just it was just screaming out to be a to be a five by seven and to have three diamonds because I like the six by six, 
but I just was like, it needs three diamonds, which is why even on that six by six one, I stuck a diamond in the middle, as you'll see. <laughs> I just stuck this extra one in the middle here. Um, because for me, it was like, no, it needs three. Two's just not rocking it for me. Um, hi, Zanya. Uh, so, yeah, so I decided uh, I had to do a five by seven. Try and beat everybody else to it. I don't know if I've managed or not. But anyway, there we go. I haven't seen any. I have looked it up, but I've called it something different as well. I've called it a five by seven stacked triple diamond card because we already have um, like diamond cards, different, but they look completely different to this. So I didn't want to call it like a you know a diamond card because it's kind of it's not your normal diamond card. It's a different version. So yes, but I've got quite a lot of ideas at the moment, and so it's a bit like I'm trying to get through them in the time that I have. I'm trying to film, edit, upload but then schedule it in and then I'm like you know it's just difficult because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to do I don't want to jump the gun so so this one is a bit of a jump the gun but you know whatever all right let's glue this bit down where's my glue there it is and then I'm gonna have to stamp this one I haven't done it yet so I will do that in a moment Okay, Rita, cool. Um, have a good time with your friend. And uh, yeah, you can watch the catch up. Hi, Teresa. Good to have you. How are you? How's the weather where you are? We always talk about weather, don't we? It's a very British thing to do, talk about the weather. <laughs> right, okay. So let me stick these down. I can use glue now. Yep, don't forget the thumbs up. Thank you, Rita. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so these these papers are a Midsummer Day's Dream from Antonio makes. Beautiful. And he's got another one. There's another butterfly one for those of you who like butterflies. Um, there are also some non-butterfly ones, I think, in the day in Midsummer Day's Dream, I think. But the Bright Bouquet might be better. If you don't like butterflies, the Bright Bouquet set might be better because um it's actually very floral. Lots of flowers. I don't think there were any butterflies actually in the bright bouquet one. I think it's all flowers and hearts, I think. Um, beautiful day in Hampshire. Yes, it is here. Did it start off foggy with you, Louise? Because here was really foggy. Oh, that's supposed to be on the back, that one. Here it started off really foggy and murky this morning. It was horrible. Last night I was thinking, do I need to put my, um, my frost cover on my windscreen? But then I looked up the, the weather and it said it was going to be misty or foggy. And I thought, no. I don't want a wet screen cover, and I'm glad I didn't, because it would have been rather damp. So yeah, thank you, Teresa. Yeah, they are, aren't they? I love these papers. They're so pretty, and delicate, and sophisticated. Right, and I like them as well because they're quite good for most age groups. Um, so they're quite versatile. Right. Okay. So that's that. I just need to quickly stamp this piece um very foggy yeah cleared about an hour ago okay yeah we cleared a bit a bit sooner than that i think um but it was foggy when i dropped the sun off and then i think it cleared probably around nine ish half nine ish something like that let me move this over as you can probably see i've got a stamping platform and i always leave just a few little birthday stamps in here and so like now, when I just want to quickly stamp, I just quickly whack it in, choose one of my three, ink it up and go for it. And I just find it just cuts out a lot of time wasting because I'm not a big stamper, as you know. I like it. I've done it before. I do quite enjoy it. But it's one of the things, oops, I just don't have time for. Um, it's just not something that I, you know, really do very often. Oh, gosh, come on. I've just knocked all my flowers over. I'll just turn them back around okay there we go so there we are job done didn't have to go and root around in my stash to find find the right stamp just got it here ready to go it does mean that pretty much all my cards have one of three greetings on it but never mind <laughs> they all go to different people so nobody apart from you guys knows so there we are right let's turn this over and stick this down 
pretty much dry. It's pretty much dry. Right, let's stick this down. We're going to be finished in seconds, which kind of supports what I was saying about if you want to, you know, because the decorating doesn't take very long. And there's not that many pieces to cut out. You've only really got your four, your four mats, your three patterns and a, and a white piece, and then three squares. That's it. So to decorate is really easy. So I actually might take up my own advice. I might make up a whole load of these because um, they're quite good for mail cards as well, I reckon. Um, yeah, so there we go. So that's that. Right. So you next need three matte squares that are one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And then three pattern squares that are one and one eighth by one and one eighth. Now I've obviously got, I'm going to go white for my pattern just because I've got these flowers that I want to go on top. And so I don't really want, no, sorry, that way around. I don't really want a pattern because I'm going to obscure it. So I thought I'll stay white and then that way I, my flowers are, you know, you know take pride of, pride of place. So these need to go on here like that. So I'm going to go ahead and stick those down. Um, you're not good at stamping either, Linda, no. <laughs> yeah, mine, I have to say, there are times when mine looks like a two-year-old's done it as well. Um, for me, it's more just, it's just all the faff and the mess and the, I just haven't got the time for it. Um, yeah, exactly, Cindy, I've got quite a few stamps. I mean, I've got like a whole, like a square drawer, you know, there's, you know, like the Ikea, um, the Ikea units that have got square, you know, square units, what they're called. Comba. Anyway, there's the square IKEA units, and they have those square like draw things that go with them. So I've got those, uh, and I've got one with Christmas stamps in, and one with everything else in it. But that's pretty much it. So, um, but I just don't, I just don't use them very often. And I, I do like things like heat embossing. I think when I used to demo, I used to do a bit more stamping because, you know, you. You get scent stamps, you have to show them off, you get scent heat embossing powder, so you end up having to use stuff. And craft classes as well. When I used to do them in person, we used to do stamping. Because again, I have ladies who like stamping, so but I'm more of a folds person. I like just to have my papers all ready, make a fancy fold, stick them all down, job done. So I do enjoy heat embossing, but again, I haven't really done much of it, I have to say. I enjoy the effect of it. I think for me as well, because if I war if it warps and that, then uh, it can be a bit annoying. So yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, Karen. It's really easy card to do once you've done that. Once you've got the you know the folds and everything done, it's really easy to put together. Um, that's it, Louise. A Calax, yeah, it's a Calax unit. That's right. And then I've got another one that's not a Calax, but it's similar. It's got a slightly smaller square. It's literally like a quarter of an inch smaller. But it's good because there's boxes that I got from the works, the range, the range, boxes I got from the range and they fit perfectly. So I was happy. Right. So then these are going to go on here. Now, I really wanted to put these on here, but I have got this happy birthday and previously I'd put that on the middle. So now I'm like, mm, unless I find a smaller happy birthday and stick it. Because I like that. But I don't like that because I, I prefer to have the orange in there. I kind of need a smaller happy birthday to put at the top. Hmm, what do we think, everybody? Uh, you print sentiments and die cut them. Yeah, I know. Actually, do you know what? That's a good idea, you know, Linda. You've just got me thinking. Because I could stamp them, scan them, print them, and then just go ahead and just print, print, print and die cut. You might have come up with a good idea there, Linda. I think I might be doing that because I do have some uh, sentiments with their dyes. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just can't bother to print a stamp and then die cut them. But if I had them printed and I just had to die cut them, that would be good. Right, I'm going to raise these up a little bit. I feel like they need, in fact, I might just cut down the... I might just cut down the petals and curl them a little bit because I feel like they're a bit flat. I mean, they're crocheted flowers, for goodness sake, so they're not going to be that 3D, are they? But I feel like they need to be a bit more 3D than they already are. So let me just cut down here. And let's just do some curling because I've put vellum behind. So let's just do a bit of curling. 
Uh, yeah, I put these flowers on vellum. I got some peachy coloured vellum because they already had, they come and they've got like white centres here. So obviously they were supposed to be like see-through. So I just cut out the white bit um, and then I didn't like the fact they were completely like see-through. So I just put some uh, vellum on because I figured they just needed a little bit of something, but just not, you know, not too much. Can't see. There we go. Right, let's just coax them up a little bit. That's better. That's a better thing. There we go. They're quite cute. I mean, they're quite... I've not used these crochet flower ones before. But the colours just went really well. So I thought, I am going to use them for this. So, the only problem is, I don't know what to do on that middle bit now. I'm going to have to do a different sentiment. Unless I can find a way... To maybe have half a flower either side i might do that actually maybe i should have like half flower one there and one down there hmm come on people any ideas any ideas on uh, on these flowers i need i need help because i like the greeting in the middle but i also like the flower in the middle i really like this greeting because of the gold it kind of is quite nice it kind of pops so I quite like that, but I feel like it's missing the orange. It needs the orange. And there, but if I do that, that's not going to go anywhere. So the other option is to do like one there and maybe cut out another one and have it here. But then does that look weird? I don't know. So it would be equivalent of having one there and one there. I knew that was obviously not this one, but this one. Hmm. 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 Cut flower in the middle. You reckon, yeah. It just means I've got to find a different sentiment then for there. Which is a problem. <laughs> oh, these card making decisions that we have to make, honestly. Well, I do prefer the I prefer the flower in the middle. I've got I have got a Teresa cut around the sentiment, a smaller sentiment, yeah. Um you like the sentiment in the middle. Oh goodness me, we've got conflicting now. You're not helping me, people. <laughs> I have that same conflict in my head. I have got smaller sentiments, but they're not the best. Like, they're not... Um, they're kind of... I like that one because it's got gold on it. Um, hmm. Orange flower at the corner. Uh, put the flower on the... Put the flowers on the side panels, okay. Can you cut the flower in half and stretch it in the middle with the sentiment? Oh, yeah, you know what? I could possibly do that. I could probably cut it in half and have half the flower above and half the flower below. Now, that might work. I think I might go for that. Half the flower above and half the flower below. I think... I think that's I think that's what I might do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. In fact, I don't know actually. I might have a bigger. You know what you're saying, that Cindy. I might have a bigger version of this because he did like a couple of sizes. Let me have a quick look in the folder because I might have a bigger crocheted flower. Let me have a look. Let me have a look in my in my folder and see. Let me have a look in my folder. I'm pretty sure there is one. Pretty sure there is one. Yes, there is. There's a big one here. Is it going to be too big, though? That's the only question. Let me just get it out. I do have a big crochet orange flower. Bear with while I try and get it out with my fumbly fingers. Come on. Out you come. See, so I've got that one. And then that could go across there. Like that. Couldn't it? Hmm, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking actually just a small one, you know, because I feel like that's a bit too loopy. Right, I'm going to cut another one of these out. So we always, we, we, we coast along until we get to the decorating part and then we come to a bit of a stop, don't we? This is what tends to happen. Because my brain is like, I don't know what to do. Uh, right, let's find another. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, there we go. There's another one. Let me cut this one out. Now, for some reason as well, this isn't as dark as the other one. But anyway, it'll do. It will do. It will do. Yes, half and half. I think a half and half thing is going to be a good idea. Put that down there. Right. Um. Yeah. So I could cut my flower in half or I could actually um, just put another flower below. Can I cut it in half? No, I can. I'm just going to cut him in half, you know. Save myself doing another one. Oh, I've done it now. I've cut him in half. Ah. Yeah, so then we could have that one there, like that. And that one there, like that. Yeah, I like that. I think we're going to go with that. We're going to go with that, is what we're going to go with. And we're going to get a little bit of red tape. Ugh. In the problem is it does flatten your flower, but that's fine. A little bit of red tape on the back of this sentiment. Oh, my goodness. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Put that on there like that. Oh. Just trying to work out how far my red tape needs to go. From about there to about there. I'm going to stop slightly short. Is that too much? No, that's about right. And then the same on the bottom half. About there to about there. There we go. Fabulous. Right, and then let's get my little pin thing. Where's it gone? There it is. Take the backing off. And then stick this on there right there there we go and then do the same on this bit Ooh. so take this backing off and stick this on this bit where are we there might have put a bit too much red tape on but anyway Make sure I get it lined up. And there we go. And then that goes there. Oh, yes, that's better. That's better. Now we're talking. All right, let's just go and curl these. I didn't curl these. Have I cut them all? Yes, I have. Good. Hurrah! We got there eventually. And then I think I need to find some kind of orangey gem, which I think I do have, because I think I've got some from Lucy. Oh, yes, I have here. Lucy Abrams, those would be perfect. Those beautiful, beautiful gems. Let me take the lid off, and you can see these are glossy amber mix pearls. And if you can see those, wait for my camera to keep up this way up. Nope, that way, that way. There we go. They're beautiful. So, and they're perfectly, uh, they perfectly good because you, I th partly think I should go pink, but then I think just to bring that out so it kind of feels at home. I should uh, go for the amber mix. Do love Lucy Abrams stuff. I don't get commission for promoting her. I just, because she's a small business, I do think she has some amazing things. So go and have a look at her stuff. Um, right, let's stick this down then. I'm going to stick it down with a bit of uh, red tape, I think. I could use glue, but I'm going to use a blob of red tape. I could use a glue dot, actually. I'm going to use red tape. If I go ahead and use a bit of silicon glue, I just know I'm going to have to wait for it, and I'll probably end up jogging it, and it'll end up out of out of sync. So let's just go ahead and wipe these on. Uh huh. Right, that one's going to go down there, like that, and then this one's going to go up here. Like this. Okay, Linda. Thank you for joining us. Um, right. Let's put this one on. Like that. Yeah, like that. Like that. And then this one. I've already got a foam pad on the back, helpfully. And so that's going to go on like that. There we go. You kind of don't see a diamond in the middle quite so much, but anyway, whatever. 
it's such a small diamond that you know so there we go Ooh. kind of hidden the whole middle diamond but it's fine right so then we just need to add some of these gems on right so now i need the battle of the the battle of the glue bottles it's got a bit of red tape stuck on my nose you know the uh the red tape liner oh little feebobs right let's stick the old gems on thank you thank you cindy let's stick the old let's get my gems ready first actually i might go big medium small big medium medium small and small oh, oh where is it there we are small yeah there we go big medium small all right let's start in the bottom oh gosh this is the problem i always have the nozzles get blocked up all the time there we go right go ahead and stick these down so one there, one there, and one there. And I'm going to stick that by hand. If I try and use my tweezers on that, I'm going to end up pinging it somewhere across the desk. Right, you can hear the concentration, can't you? There we go, and then the last one. Those there. Make sure they're all straight. There we go. So that's that one. And then the same on this side. Right, so one in the middle there. One here and one here. Possibly too far over. It's fine. Oh no, not too bad. One there, and the middle one. Ooh. My glue dots are not quite in the right place, but anyway. In fact, that one needs a new bit of glue. I'll just quickly put another bit of glue on. Not quite got it in the right place. And there we are. There we go. The finished card. Really like that actually. I do like that. Very nice. It's amazing what gems can do. Just add that little bit extra to your card. So there you go. It looks really complicated, but it actually isn't. <laughs> like it's not that bad. Once you get your head round um, how to do it, it's not that bad. So yeah, so there you have it. My gems are still wet. So yeah, so that's that one. So I hope you enjoyed today. It was quite a quick one today. Hi Karen, you got to go. Okay, that's cool. See you next time. Yeah, so that's that one. And then obviously that was the one I made originally, the red one. But yeah, so it's quite nice and easy to make really. I said, once you've got your head around the, the cutting and folding and whatever, it's uh it's easy to decorate super easy to decorate so i think i'm going to do what i said about doing is just um i think i'm going to go ahead and just make a few of these up and just have them flat ready to go because decorating them is so easy so easy so yeah so have a go so that wasn't a very long live at all but anyway yeah there we go that's it isn't it <laughs> and uh yeah keep your eye out for this one this will be coming soon obviously sam did it already but i've just added in the extra diamond so, yes. so there we go. Nice little trio of what I've called stacked diamond cards because they're diamonds that are stacked up on each other. So there you go, everybody. Right, well, I think I shall poodle off. I've done my job. I'm going to take you off the ceiling and bring you down and you can have a, a proper look at them. A bit shaky, sorry about that. But you can see the beautiful papers. They are so nice so nice so yeah this is the bright bouquet paper i was telling you about so if you don't like butterflies then that's the best one to go for and then this one here 
which isn't just papers I had in my stash. So yeah, right, I'm going to pootle off and I will see you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you're going out to celebrate, if you've got a husband or wife, whatever, and you're going to go out um, Valentine's meal, hope you have a nice time. Um, if you haven't got a Valentine and you're feeling a bit lonely, then don't worry, you've got friends, you know, we've got us lot here, so don't, don't feel lonely. Um, and we'll see you all next week. Okie doke, so I'll see you soon, everybody. Bye, bye.